For those of you who've been following my channel, you know that I've been getting away from mathematics lately, but I'm going to do a redo on an old math video on Gabriel's horn to make it more concise mathematically. So uh, this is going to be one more for the road here. I might return to math, I might not, but if I don't, this is one more for the road. So get your Kleenex ready, get your cry box, and uh, box, you know, box of chocolates, flowers, um, crying. Uh, this is making me kind of misty, but um, yeah, one more for the road here. We are going to not only do one more for the road, but this is going to be awesome. Because this is going to be a three-dimensional shape that has a finite volume and an infinite surface area. And here it is right here. Now, this shape that I'm going to show you does not exist in the physical universe. It exists in a mathematical kind of platonic construction. But what I've done is I've taken uh, y equals 1 over x from 1 and extended it out to infinity and then rotated it around the x-axis. And sure enough, the math does show us a, an infinite, uh, pardon me, a finite volume. Um, the construction of this would be, the, of the volume would be the limit as n goes to infinity pi times the integration between 1 and n of 1 over x squared dx. And that's equals to the limit as n goes to infinity pi times the difference between x equals n and x equals 1 of negative 1 over x. And that uh, will converge on pi. Okay, because this, if you look at it, uh, this will, um, this figure inside this box will simply be 1. Okay, and that's 1 times pi, and that's equal to pi. <clears throat> now that would be finite. Uh, the, surface area, the surface area, though, would be um, the limit as n goes to infinity, 2 pi times the integration from 1 to n of 1 over x dx. And that's equal to the limit as n goes to infinity, 2 pi, uh, the difference between x equals n and x equals 1 of ln of x, and that is divergent. That will get you infinity. So this, getting back to this particular shape here, we have a, a shape that if we extend it to infinity, we'll have a, a finite volume but an infinite surface area. Now, what's really going on here on a deeper level philosophically? Um, the, the mathematicians argue about such things as does infinity exist? And most modern conversations about infinity are handled within set theory. They're not handled uh, within, let's say, something like geometry. So it is very, very tempting to say that um, something like, well, uh, the volume of a sphere would be the integration of an infinite number of circles slicing through at their particular areas, okay? Mathematicians don't really say that. However, I would argue that there is an argument to be made that if you do invoke uh, some kind of infinity in the realm of uh, geometry or the idea of something infinitely uh, flat, okay, that maybe you could argue that. And it's interesting that if we do argue something like that, if we argue that the volume of Gabriel's horn would be the infinite number of the areas of the circle slicing through it, which in a sense is what we're doing here, but what we're doing here is we're constructing it in terms of not only the limit of n, but, it, but the limit as delta x goes to zero of... Um, uh, as, as delta x approaches dx. In other words, as you construct... Uh, calculus, you you construct it using limits. You don't actually even say that dx necessarily really exists. But if we invoke dx as something existing, as like a delta x approaching zero, then in a way you are looking at the volume of Gabriel's horn as being an infinite number of, of the, air, the the integration of all the areas of the circle slicing through it. Okay, and the same thing with the surface area, that would be the integration of the circumferences, right? If you think about it, you know, like a bunch of rubber bands all wrapped around this, adding up to the whole, make, making the whole surface area. I mean, whether you want to think of it like that or not, uh, you can construct, if, if you do invoke some kind of infinity into geometry, you could look at it that way. Okay, well... As the radius gets ever smaller and smaller and smaller, the circumference to area ratio of each given circle slicing through the Gabriel's horn becomes ever bigger. Um, for instance, the radius of 1 over 1,000. Well, the 
area would be would be pi over a million. The circumference would be pi over 500, right? Well, pi over a million would be pi times 1 over 1,000 squared. And then the circumference would be uh, 2 pi times 1 over 1,000. As it gets smaller and smaller and smaller, the circumference to to area ratio gets bigger and bigger and bigger until the point where you have um, r equals 1 over x it's to the point where the limit as x goes to infinity, the circumference to area ratio becomes infinite. So you could argue then that it is conceivable according to that model to have uh, the the an infinite uh, well you would have a an infinitesimal circumference and an infinitesimal area, but you would have the ratio of the two being infinite. So you can conceive of the surface area being infinitely greater than the volume. I mean, that is conceivable. It's not proven that way, but that is conceivable using kind of an abstract mode of thinking. Um, but anyways, however the paradox rolls, I mean, that's um, however the paradox is resolved. I mean, I think this is a pretty fun thing to have uh, uh, even conceivably a finite volume and an infinite surface area. Now, also interesting to note would be if that last thing was Gabriel's horn, maybe this is Michael's stump. I don't know. Um, it's sideways. But you take um, y equals 1 over the square root of x, rotated around x, the x-axis from 0 to 1. Um, that's a pretty pitiful 1 over the square root of x, isn't it? It's a little, little sharp on there. Apologize for that. But... Let's do the math. The volume would be the limit as n goes to 0. And uh, we have to because it's a 1 over x. So we have to make give this a limit. The limit as n goes to 0 pi times the integration from n to 1 of 1 over x dx is equal to the limit as n goes to 0 pi times the difference uh, pi times the difference between x equals 1 and x equals n of ln of x. And that would be divergent. Okay, that would be infinite. However, the surface area would be um, the limit as n goes to 0, 2 pi integration between n and 1 of 1 over the square root of x dx is equal to 2 pi times no limit necessary here, 2 pi times the difference between x equals 1 and x equals 0 of 2 times the square root of x. And that would be 4 pi. That would be finite. And it's easier to conceive of having a, an infinite volume and a finite surface area than the other way around, but I still think that's pretty cool. All right. Um, on to newer subjects. I hope that you watch this channel every single day between now and the rest of your life. Thank you.